Welcome to the Lightworkers Lab, a podcast for spiritual people who want to go deeper, aim higher, and design truly extraordinary lives. And now for your host, intuitive coach and spiritual teacher, Crystal Ann Compton. Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. Welcome to episode seven of the Lightworkers Lab podcast. I'm super jazzed to be here. Um, Before I start anything, let me just say I hope everybody in the States at least had a great Thanksgiving weekend uh, or week last week and that you were able to enjoy your family, which I realize it's not always the easiest thing, um, that you had a lot of yummy food and that you really were thankful and grateful for all of your blessings because, you know, a lot of times we don't really sit in the reality of our blessings. And um, so it's nice to just take a little time out of our day, out of our year to remember to be grateful. Now, today's podcast is going to be wonderful. We've got a lot of good questions. Thank you for sending them in. Um, And I even have one of the members of my expert panel answering one of those questions for you. Now, her name is Lauren Antoafermo, and she's one of the teachers in the Lightworkers Lab. She kind of has cool a cool focus of health and wellness and spiritual nutrition, but she's also a really awesome channel, and I think you're going to really like her. I'm going to feature her answer at the end of this podcast, so make sure you listen to the whole thing because what she shares is powerful. Before we go into the questions, I just wanted to touch base with you. I like to connect with you at the beginning of this podcast and share with you what's going on in my life or what I observe happening in the world. And today I just want to talk a little bit to those of you out there who are feeling a little bit spiritually disconnected. And to those of you out there who are also feeling kind of unsupported, it's hard, isn't it? When we lean into our spirituality and we feel like we're doing our part, maybe we're pursuing our service or our light work or our development, but we don't necessarily feel supported by spirit or encouraged by spirit, or maybe we don't feel anything from spirit. Believe me, I've been there. It doesn't matter if I'm up on the internet or on a podcast or in a group teaching or doing whatever it is that I'm doing. I have my own issues. And I think it's important to just recognize that we all have our doubts and that we all have our fears and that we all have uncertainty around maybe what's coming for us or what's happening in the world. And so to those people who are actively dealing with that now at this time in your life, I just want to share something with you, okay? Many years ago, I read a book called Awareness by Anthony DeMello, capital D, little e, capital M, E-L-L-O. I'll put a link to this in the blog post that features this podcast. But Anthony DeMello was kind of a really cool guy. He was a Jesuit priest who at some point was excommunicated or disenfranchised at the very least from the Catholic Church because he was born in India. And so he had a real Eastern mindset and he looked at things a little bit differently than the structure of Catholicism told him that he should be looking at it. And so they told him to leave. And then I think they reintegrated him. They invited him back and he became a priest again. I don't know a whole lot of Catholic drama. I don't know the whole story. I just know that Anthony DeMello may he rest in peace, was such a light in this world. And he had so many good principles and lessons to teach us. And in that book, Awareness, I remember this little passage and it changed my life. And I want to share it with you. And I just want to say, I'm going to paraphrase the heck out of it because I don't have the book in front of me. But this is the gist of what Mr. DeMello was saying. He was saying, yes, right now, at this time on the planet, it's crazy. It looks very confusing out there and very frightening. Yes, there are wars. There's things happening in nature. Mother Nature is responding to the energy of the humans and the people and the beings on this planet. Yes, the economies are strange. Politics are tumultuous. Yes, if you were to just look at what was happening external from you, you'd find a lot of reasons to be afraid. However, he went on to say, right here, right now, you are okay. And I want to just let that hit you where you live. And I want it to resonate because I want you to really feel that. Right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, you are okay. You're listening to this podcast. 
Tonight you get to make a meal that's going to fill you up. And maybe you'll even share that meal with a husband or wife or children. Or maybe you'll be alone and safe and warm wherever you are. Then you're going to be able to go and get into your comfy bed and have a nice, long, safe sleep. Tomorrow when you wake up, you'll have a cup of coffee, you'll have some breakfast, you'll get in your car, you'll drive to work, and you may not like work, and that's okay, but you have a job, and you'll have lunch, and you'll have people in your life that you talk to, and then you'll come home and you'll do it again. Right now, wherever you are, you are okay, and we must focus on that. And it's easy, isn't it, to forget that we are always being supported by spirit. It's easy when we're going through tribulation and we're going through hard times. And I know a lot of you out there are going through hard times and you are confused and you may be a little frightened. It's easy when we feel that way to question source energy or that energy we would call God energy and say, why and where the heck are you? I've done that many times in my life and I get it. And the way I get out of that space of feeling disconnected, feeling unsupported, is I return to something that Christ said. And as many of you know, I came up through the fundamentalist Christian faith. I, that was my paradigm, and that's the language in which I speak. And I also think a lot of you are attracted to me because I'm okay to speak in this language. I just don't want to ostracize anybody by referencing Jesus, but this is who I am, people. I love Jesus, and I talk about Jesus quite a lot. But I often return to what Jesus said when he was talking about the sparrow and he was teaching people and telling them, why are you so worried? Why? Worry isn't going to add any time to your life. And in fact, it's going to probably take some time away from your life. And he told them, God has his eye on the sparrow. God watched that sparrow hop from tree to tree to tree, gathering materials to make a nest. God watched as that bird had her eggs and hatched the eggs and God watched as the babies began to fly and start their own lives and God didn't just watch God supported God provided the trees provided the materials God has his eye on the sparrow Christ was saying that means he absolutely has his eye on you and this is powerful I've reminded myself of this so many times but each and every time I do, I get emotional. I'm getting emotional right now. Because in this crazy world, in our crazy relationships, and as we are ascending and changing, and our vibration is shifting, and we are going through so much transition, it's too easy to forget that God has his eye on us. It's too easy to forget that God created this intricate system, this hierarchy of blessed light beings, and then gave them charge over us. He said, go take care of my people. And now we have emissaries, which are the angels and the guides and the ancestors and the friends and the spirit animals. God created all of this support for us. And he said, take care of my person because I got my eye on them. Now, if there's one absolute in which I truly believe, I truly believe it is that there is a God. And in our community, the New Age community, the metaphysical community, it can be kind of a controversial thing to say that because people attach this idea of God to various religions and systems and they have reactions and it can very quickly spin out of control. But if I know one thing for sure, I know that there is a God and that God created us and he did so with a purpose. He did so with a vision for us. God created our higher selves and God created the various dimensions in which we are currently existing upon being dispatched by our higher selves into incarnations. God has a plan and he's got his eye on you. And when it's hard, when you feel disconnected, you remember that right here and right now, you are okay. God is supporting you today just as he supported you last year when you had that epic catastrophe or that real big problem that you got through anyway. And God was there 20 years ago when you were going through a change. Maybe you were divorcing. Maybe you were having kids. Maybe you were having a crisis of spirituality. God was there with his eye on you. And I often think of myself, seven-year-old Crystal, in the midst of an extremely abusive, crazy, violent family. I often remember that God 
had his eye on me, and he knew where I was going. And yeah, life was hard, and I had to learn things, and I had to overcome things, but that's life, my friends. We're all going to do that. We have to. That's part of the package. But through it all, 7-year-old Crystal, 15-year-old Crystal, 30-year-old Crystal, and now 48-year-old Crystal, God had his eye on me and had a plan for me. I want you to believe in the comfort of that because when we believe it, that's when we begin to truly see the evidences of that in our lives. And now having said that, and now that my heart is so full and I've got goosebumps and everything, let's go into the first question of the podcast. Now, before I head into this question, let me very quickly remind you that if you have any questions about spirituality or metaphysics, or if you have something going on in your personal life right now that you would like some intuitive illumination around, please feel free to contact me at TuesdayQuestions at CrystalAnnCompton.com. That's TuesdayQuestions, one word, at CrystalAnnCompton.com. Don't forget the E in Anne. Make sure you send it just to that email because that's the only one I go to when I'm sourcing these questions. So if you're sending them anywhere else, I'm not getting them. Somebody else is and and I'm not even seeing them. So make sure you send it to the right place. And that way, hopefully I can answer one of your questions in a future podcast. Now, this first question comes from Mirella A from Veliko Tarnovo, Bulgaria. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of that. In this question, she says, Hey, my name is Mirella, and I would really like to know what my archangel lineage is. Love and blessings. Well, before I go into what I see, because she sent me a picture, and if you send a question in, please send a picture and also your date of birth. I will not share this, but it helps me to hook in. But I do very clearly get an archangel for you, Mirella. But I want to explain to everybody else what she's talking about when she uses the term Archangel Lineage. I have a few videos available on YouTube, and so if you're interested in going a little bit deeper into this subject, type in my name and then Archangel Lineage, and at least one or two videos will pop up. But for now, let me give you a really quick description of what she's talking about. In the beginning with Source Energy, Source Energy is and was the all. Source energy sought to experience itself by bringing different phases into creation. In the first phase of creation, source energy created the archangels. And that's it. Just the archangels. So we're talking Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, etc., etc. These beings are the highest in vibration. They are extremely proximate to source energy, meaning very, very close to source energy. And so when we experience an archangel in our life, it is a huge energy because it feels a lot like God energy. Now, after the archangels were created, they partnered with source energy to bring about the second phase of creation. In other words, they commingled, if you will, their energies with source energy or primary energy to bring about the second phase of creation. And within that second phase of creation, we have other angels, for example, subclasses of angels. We have certain masters, many interdimensionals, and we also have the higher self souls. As some of you know, you have a higher self and it's this higher self that dispatched you or sent you into various incarnations, some of which are happening right now simultaneously in order to also experience itself and gain knowledge and information and energy. The higher selves, not unlike the archangels, are extremely high vibration and proximate to source energy. Now, after that, the second phase of creation commingled with the first phase, commingling then with source energy once again to bring about the third phase of creation and so on and so forth, all the way down, if you will, although it's not directional, to you, where you are right now listening to this. And the significance of this is that you can trace your spiritual lineage up through the various phases into the first phase, which are the archangels. There is an archangel that exists in the first phase of creation that is, in effect, your grandfather angel. Each and every one of us has this main alignment and main connection to one 
archangel. And we can usually tell who that archangel is by studying the various descriptors of the archangel. For example, we could look at Archangel Michael. We could look at his traits and his attributes. Archangel Michael is a protective angel. He is also the main angel, the general in charge, if you will, delegating to all other archangels and angel classes what it is that they've got to do. Archangel Michael also carries a soldier energy. In mythology, Michael is the angel who went up against Lucifer and cast him out of heaven. He don't play. He's strong. He's commanding. He's powerful. And so now let's look at some of our career soldiers or some of the members of law enforcement. They have a lot of those same traits. They have a desire to care for and protect other people and stand in the gap and defend what it is that they believe. You can actually feel Michael energy on some of these people. Now, likewise, we have Raphael. Raphael's name means literally God heals. And so all of the healers of the world, the doctors, the nurses, and the alt healers, for example, your Reiki practitioners or your chakra balancing practitioners or those of us who work with energy and work with attunements, all of these types of people tend to be Raphael people. And so for everyone listening out there, I would encourage you to really look into the various archangels, really dig deep and zoom in on what their main characteristics and attributes are, because you will find yourself in terms of your particular traits and abilities within the characteristics of one main angel. Now, Morella, you wrote me and you wanted me to tell you what I sensed about your archangel lineage simply by looking at your picture. And as I looked at your picture, my first thought is, I don't know. But then very clearly, I heard the words San Raphael. San Raphael. So that's Saint Raphael. That's Raphael the archangel. Raphael the angel that heals. And so I wouldn't be surprised to learn if you were a nurse or if you were interested in Reiki or energy or vibration or attunements. Raphael people often are predominantly clairsentient. Clairsentience is the psychic ability to sense and to feel, and typically this happens within the body. Clairsentients feel in their gut when something is off or when something is wrong. Clairsentients feel in their heart when they're being activated to be of service to others. Clairsentience can pick up on the emotions of others. They're often shorted when they walk into Walmart because there's just too much crazy energy. They're absorbing that energy, they're assimilating that energy, and they're feeling that energy. There's another thing healers often experience, and that is activation in the area of the palms, both palms. They tend to feel warmth there. They tend to feel a heaviness and what would feel like an activation of energy in the palms. This is usually the first question I ask somebody if they think they're a healer or if they should step into their healing. I ask them about the palms because there's chakras in the palms and they tend to be connected to a healing ministry. So Mirella, my answer to you again is San Rafael. Beautiful. It came through so clear. And I hope that it inspires you and I hope that it comforts you knowing that a really magnificent archangel is directly related to you and more importantly, has your back. This next question comes from Chris. She goes on to say, ever since I can remember, there has always been this man, huge, medieval looking, carrying a mace but always just kind of standing there. It scared the heck out of me. My grandmother would always simply say to me that he was my guardian and then leave it at that. Now that she's passed, however, I'm finding out more and more that both my grandmother and her brother were Christian witches. That's a whole different question, but my main question is, how can I figure out who this being is? Well, my answer is going to start off really simple. Ask. Talk to the being. The next time you sense the being or see the being, speak directly to it. I often teach my students, engage the phenomenon. When something is appearing in your environment, it's appearing for a reason. They are either showing themselves to you so that you know that they're there or they are attempting to communicate with you. And so lean into that. Instead of getting too afraid, even though I know to startle is human, try to correct yourself as soon as possible and actually speak to the phenomenon. Many times, shockingly, the phenomenon will speak back to you. For the most part, this is a telepathic transmission, meaning it's happening in your head, but it's also clear. 
Telepathic transmissions are often very resonant, very bold, and they have a different type of a characteristic than our plain old imaginative thoughts. So what you want to do after asking the question is just be neutral and calm and see what's coming in. And where is it coming in? Is it coming in through a telepathic receiver or are you feeling something? Are you seeing an image in your mind's eye or are you hearing something? If the being wants to communicate with you, they will give you a message. Now, sometimes I will say they will not speak to you at that exact moment, but they will appear to you in a dream. Remember, the dream mechanism is the easiest way for any spirit to communicate and interact with us. All they have to do essentially is access the channel that's created from the pineal gland up through the Akashic, through the various phases of creation, all the way up to source energy. It's this huge glowing channel of light and they can access it or spike into it and then ride it all the way down into your consciousness. I know this sounds crazy, but this is actually how it works. They ride that channel all the way down into your consciousness. This is the channel in which we get our downloads and our other spirit information, but this is the main channel that spirits use and guides use and past loved ones use in order to access us. So again, let me say, speak to the phenomenon, engage the phenomenon and ask the being, who are you and why are you here? Wait for an answer. And if it doesn't come, then let's look to our dreams to see if there's any information there. Next, what I want to say to you is that it is imperative that you learn how to read energy. You can tell whether a being who's entering your environment is good or bad. Now, good or bad, that is a judgment. And I'm really not talking about that. I'm really talking about good being more high vibration or closer to God, bad being lower vibration or farther away from God. You can feel that in your body. We have all been equipped, each and every one of us, whether we feel we're psychic or not. We have all been equipped with the receivers necessary to read energy. And you've got to start getting real good at this because the next time this being shows up, I want you to hook into the energy of this being. And then from a very neutral standpoint, not judging it, not all scared and crazy. I want you to feel the energy. Does it feel good? Does it feel high in vibration or does it feel low? Does it feel kind of creepy? Does it make you feel a little bit sick or do you get that rush of anxiety and panic and fear? Now that low reaction would indicate this is a low being. That high reaction would indicate this is a high vibration being and probably a guide. Now my interpretation of this situation, although you didn't send me a picture, nor did you send me your date of birth, so I can't really adequately hook into you and your field. But my interpretation of the situation is that this indeed is one of your guides. I don't get anything negative from this. But most importantly, it's got to come from you. You have to feel it in your own energy to truly understand it. Next question comes from Shelly G. And she's one of my students and she's also in the Lightworkers Lab. You start your question by saying, I love your YouTubes, your podcasts, and your Everything Psychic class. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My question is, sometimes I see spirits, regular looking people, angels, and sometimes weird, scary stuff standing by my bed. I usually just start screaming and they go away. Is there a purpose to my seeing this? Am I supposed to do something with this or is it just random? Shelly, my first question to you is whether you are asleep when this is happening. Are you kind of rousing from sleep and you're still really drowsy and really tranced out? And is that when you see these beings? Because that's called the hypnagogic state. And the hypnagogic state is a state of trance. It's a state of interbetween where we are not fully awake, but at the same time, we're not fully asleep. And we are able in this state to peer into the astral and to peer into other dimensions. And often when we peer, we see stuff, we'll see various types of beings. And yes, some of those beings can be a little startling and disturbing, especially the beings that are in the lower astral levels. If this is how it's happening, then this just means that you are perceiving trans-dimensionally or interdimensionally, and you should not be afraid. What I want you to know is that the astral is a thought form reality, and as soon as you think it, it is. And so if you do get scared, you can immediately call one of your angels. You can immediately ask that the being goes away. I've even known students who have blasted the beings with love energy or a big beam of blue light just to get rid of them. You can do 
whatever you want because it's a thought form reality. I only mention this because you do not have to be afraid. You are in control of that experience, but you have to realize that you're in control. Otherwise, it can be downright frightening. Now, if these experiences are not happening as a result of you waking up and being in that interbetween, but rather if you are wide awake and you're starting to see these beings, then this feels to me more like an activation of your mediumship. This is probably the time of day that various beings can approach you and get your attention. This makes sense, of course, because things are quieting down, you're getting into bed, we have the stillness of evening, we have the quiet of our inner thoughts, and that is a really great time for spirits to step forward. Ask any medium and they'll tell you that spirits often use the night time to approach us and give us messages. Now, I will just say that I'm not about that. I have business hours and I have told my team and I've told any ambient spirits around me that they cannot disturb me while I sleep. That is precious time. That is refueling time. And so I very rarely get disturbed by spirits. But a lot of people don't have business hours and a lot of mediums experience insomnia and sleep disruption because of this type of activity. So I wouldn't be surprised, Shelley, if you are a medium or if mediumistic type abilities are starting to activate within you. The reason I don't feel too concerned about the situation is the fact that you scream and they leave. Anytime a being is just trying to get us a message or interact with us and they realize that they're scaring the crap out of us, they will leave because that is not their intent. They do not want to frighten us. And remember, last week I talked about how sophisticated a process it is for spirits to actually manifest in your environment. They have to harness all sorts of energies just to appear before you. And a lot of times they don't get that right and they appear in a way that again is very disturbing to us. If we tell them though that they're scaring us, if we ask them to reconstitute themselves and try again, most of the time they will. Now, because you mentioned that you also see angels and other types of interdimensional beings, this feels to me like them approaching you and inviting you into an interaction. I would recommend strongly that you correct your fear response and that you engage the phenomenon. As I said in another answer, if phenomenon appears in your environment, engage it. Ask it questions. Ask it why it's there. If you're all spun out and crazy, though, caught up in your fear, then that communication is really not going to land with them and they're not going to really want to continue to make you afraid. So the sooner you get your fear under control, the sooner you can actually begin to talk to them. And if you're meant to use this, Shelley, if you're meant to have a mediumistic ministry and be of service to other people as a result of having this ability, those beings appearing to you will be the first to validate that for you. All right, this next question comes from Jamie C. And it's a really interesting question, which is why I'm actually throwing it in here, because even though we're probably going to go a little long, I just, it's fascinating. And I think a lot of you out there are going to think so too. She says, when I meditated today, I briefly saw what seemed to be large ant beings looking down at me. I meditate while lying down with my eyes closed, but it seemed that I was seeing them with my mind's eye in my head. There looked to be about three of them. I only saw their large heads and large dark eyes and antennas drooping over their heads. Her ultimate question is, are these beings real or is she making this up? Is this a product of her imagination? And the reason I find this interesting, Jamie, is because what you're talking about reminds me a lot of the Hopi Indian tribe. The Hopi actually say that the good and pure of heart at some point in our history went down into the middle of the earth to remain protected from some of the things that were happening on earth. And there they encountered what they call the ant people. They even drew the ant people. And if you take a look at the drawings that the Hopi did, you'll see that they actually resemble greys or those beings we would call the Zeta Reticuli. These are the beings that kind of look like ants. They've got these big heads. They've got these long limbs. And I can see how they might be mistaken for ants. What I'm saying here is you're not the first person to encounter so-called ant people. 
because there are records around this and other experiences, it would indicate to me that this was in fact a real experience. Now in my meditations, I am often approached by interdimensionals. I have all kinds of contact with them. And long ago, I learned not to be too startled at the way that they appear to me. Instead, I focused on reading their energy. And in doing so, I could kind of differentiate between whether they were service to self or service to other, meaning whether they were selfish, running an agenda, or if they were there for a benevolent or uplifting purpose. I would recommend for you, if you encounter these beings again in your meditation, that you too would read their energy and see how these beings make you feel. And just as I've said a few times, engage the phenomenon. Ask them who they are and ask them why they are there. When we engage the phenomenon, we give the being the opportunity to actually respond. And they know that we're open to it. Again, typically these beings don't want to scare us. They simply want to have an interaction. At the end of the day, only you can tell whether they were real or whether they were a figment of your imagination. But as far as I'm concerned, having read your question, I don't doubt that those beings were most likely real. Now we've come to the last question of the podcast, and I'm excited because I get to introduce you to another member of my expert panel, and her name again is Lauren Antuofermo. Lauren is a powerful channel, a powerful psychic, and also a teacher. Right now, her focus is around vibration and loving yourself and getting your physical body into alignment with your spiritual body, but she has so much to offer, and I thought she was the perfect fit for this question. The question comes from Sydney H. from Freeburg, Pennsylvania. She says, my question is regarding my illness, which I have suffered from for almost two years now. I believe that I made some kind of a spiritual agreement before I was born that put this illness in my path. However, it very much limits my ability to connect with and help others, which I consider to be the most important aspect of my life. Is there a way to get past these agreements if we learn the lessons that we're meant to? I want more than anything to regain my health. And so do you see this as being a possibility or am I meant to stay in this place of sickness for this lifetime? Now, before I kick it over to Lauren, I just want to remind you, Sydney, and of course, everybody else that Lauren is not a doctor and I am not a doctor. Any answer that we give to you, if you're asking a question about health, is coming from a spiritual perspective. It's coming from an energetic perspective. And these opinions should by no means replace sound medical advice provided by a physician or provided by a specialist. So if you're ill, if you're experiencing discord or disease in the body, make sure you go to a doctor and get yourself checked out. And with that, let's get right into Lauren's answer. Hi, Sydney. My name is Lauren Antifermo. I am an exercise physiologist and also a spiritual intuitive channel. And I really love this question. I am a big supporter of the mind-body connection and mind-body-spirit connection. And your question incorporates all three. First, I want to talk about the physical body and how the physical body really is an extension of our soul energy. Our physical body is the vessel with which we came to earth to experience the physical plane, right? So when we decided as souls to come to earth, we decided to come to create in love and joy. We knew that we would come across lower energies. We knew that we would come across some challenges and we knew that we would, you know, create some experiences for ourselves. But we also knew that we had a guidance system and that guidance system is basically how we interpret energy. It's our emotions. And so as I tapped into your energy, I could feel that there is some heavy and um, dense energy. Um, I'm talking maybe anger and some resentment from family connections, um, some experiences that you've had, and even with some people that are currently in your life that are usually in lower energies and that you always kind of want to uplift, but they kind of stay in a lower vibration. So I feel you connected to a lot of lower energy and you wanting to help others, but the people you're trying to help are not wanting to really lift in their own energy. And so you're connecting to that lower vibration. And you also have a lot of um, dense energy from, I think, familial situations and relationships. So what happens 
is that our bodies are physical expressions of our soul, of our light. At the soul level, we are pure love and light. And so source energy, pure love and light, it does not ask us to come to earth and to suffer. We are pure love. So we do not come to earth with a contract that says you are going to suffer so you can learn lessons to pay back some type of karmic debt. That is not love. Love is coming to earth in order to expand and grow in love and to create in love and to use your emotions to understand what is loving and what isn't. So the emotions that you're holding on to have manifested in a physical condition in your body. What we want to say is that, no, we do not see you having this condition for the rest of your life. We see that as you move away from feeling as if you must hold on to burdens or hold on to resentments or hold on to anger or try to communicate with people that are in lower vibrations as you move away from that and communicate with people that want your joyous emotions, that want your joyous you know, validations, that want to be with you in the energy of higher frequencies, those are the things that will align with your body and your body will react to that energy. Your body has no choice. It is an extension of who you are. Your emotions are an indication of where you are vibrationally. And if you stay too long in a lower vibration, your body will reflect those negative vibrations in the form of an illness, in the form of pain, in the form of feeling tired, weighted down, exhaustion. When you feel good, your body will begin to heal. Now, we don't see this happening overnight, but we do see you understanding the concept of how energy works and we do know that you will heal. Your energy will come back up. And so we say to you, over time, this will occur. Your body will become more energetic and you will feel better for longer periods of time because we feel as if you push your body way too much right now. When you push your body to the point of exhaustion and then come down on yourself for feeling tired, it is a cycle that keeps your body in the lower vibrations, perpetuating the illness. And remember to rest your body. When you can show your body love and appreciation for what it has done for you, it will react tenfold in healing energy. And for you, we see it happening quicker than you even imagine, yet it will not occur overnight. Remember that love is being on earth and creating in joy, not learning lessons of suffering. Love feels good, Suffering is aligning with something that is not for your highest good. We send you our love and say thank you and have a wonderful evening. Sydney, <laughs> I hope that that really resonated with you just to understand how we interpret energy, how our emotions are a clue to what is good for us and what isn't, and how held lower emotions in the body do manifest in physical symptoms of illness and other pains. Again, if you have any further questions or want any clarification, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at soulfultransformations.com. You can also reach me at my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash soulful transformations or my website, soulfultransformations.com. I hope this helps. A million blessings and love to you. Thank you, Lauren. We really appreciate you taking the time and talking to Sydney. And I know that your answer is going to hit home with a lot of people out there because so many of us are struggling in the physical body. And I have to tell you that the more we do our spiritual work, that the more we attempt to occupy our light body 
and spend less time in our physical body, our physical body actually is going to fall out of alignment and we are going to experience illnesses and disruptions and dissonance and disturbance in our physical body. Now on that note, I just want to cover a couple of different things before we close this podcast. First and foremost, there are still four available scholarships and these scholarships are for the people out there who really want to take one of my classes, whether it's everything psychic or all about angels or supercharge your life with symbols or even the upcoming blueprint class. You really want to attend one of these classes, but for whatever reason, you just don't have the resources right now. If you're someone who will commit to going through the material and hopefully who will also join us in the lab because you get an automatic free membership for a period of time if you take one of my classes, then I want to hear from you. Please write me at scholarships at crystallandcompton.com. That's scholarships at crystallandcompton.com. Again, we have four available scholarships and if this resonates with you, I want to hear from you. Last, I just want to let everybody know that this is the last week that we are signing up people for the Blueprint class. To be quite honest with you, we're already kind of at capacity, but I know that there are others out there who truly could benefit from this class. The Blueprint will give you the structure that you will need in order to give something like a psychic reading or a Reiki session or a healing session, a coaching session, etc. If this interests you, make sure you check out crystallandcompton.com slash blueprint hyphen class hyphen information. This is the last week you can sign up and if you are interested, make sure that you sign up ASAP. And on that note, I hope to connect with you next week for episode, what are we on, eight of the Light Workers Lab. And until then, I hope that you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Thank you for listening to the Lightworkers Lab podcast. To learn more about Crystal Ann Compton, visit her website at www.crystalandcompton.com or you can visit www.thelightworkerslab.com. 